In this Bacoblin camp, a Moblin spots me and hurls an explosive barrel my way. Then, before I can even react, a giant spiked ball rolls me over, knocking out my remaining hearts and triggering a game over. After some somber reflection on the loading screen, I think about what I could have done differently. Sure, I could have used stealth or dodged the explosive barrel, but what about using some of Link's new abilities? I decide to be stealthy to a point, then launch an all-out offensive using the new tools at my disposal. This time, I get within throwing distance of the Moblin, and then wait for him to spot me. He once again tosses the barrel my way, but I freeze time with recall, select the airborne barrel, then pull the old return to sender. The barrel flies back towards him and explodes, not only hitting him, but also the surrounding explosive barrels, which also blow up, throwing the Moblin off the ledge. Thinking the situation is under control, I storm the gates of the camp, only to realize there are a ton of Bacoblins in there waiting for me. Not only that, but they're being riled up by a massive Bacoblin with a horn. I relocate some of the explosive barrels using Ultra Hand and fuse a flame property onto my arrows to try and thin the herd, but it's just not enough, and I decide to live to fight another day. I notice a natural progression I could take to get to the designated island, so I start island hopping. The first landmass features a box that is suspended in midair. The zone I designed seemed to explain why it doesn't obey standard gravity rules, but I decide to use the floating box to my advantage. By using Ultra Hand, I attach two of the rockets from my inventory and blast as close as I can to the next island. To get the rockets aimed in the right direction, I need to rotate them, which is done using the D-pad. Doing so feels slightly finicky, but I rarely had too difficult of a time getting things just right. Soon, I arrive on an island with two large concrete slabs separating two pools of water. I lift the slab with Ultra Hand, draining the water, but it falls back down once I release it. Using a nearby log, I hastily try to connect the two with Ultra Hand, but it breaks the attachment. I think the weight of the slab is just too much. However, by using Recall, I can lift the slab back up for long enough that I can position the log in such a way that the weight is evenly distributed and the Ultra Hand connection holds. This drains the pool and allows me to access a treasure chest at the bottom of the reservoir. To get to the next island, I'll need to build something, but my time is starting to get a little short. Thankfully, Tears of the Kingdom includes a streamlined way to build with Ultra Hand, but unfortunately that's all I can say about it during this preview. I build a glider with fans attached, but my placement was just a little off, and the glider spins out of control almost immediately, sending Link falling off the island. Thankfully, I opened his paraglider just in time to reach the wall of that Sky Island. I climbed back to the top of the island and tried again. This failure made me realize the joys of experimentation, and even failure, that will take place in Tears of the Kingdom. I can already tell I am going to accidentally kill Link in so many spectacular ways, and I cannot wait to see the videos of everyone else's creations, successes, and failures. In fact, that was one of my favorite parts of my time with Tears of the Kingdom, the comparing of notes. There was a handful of other media members on hand for my demo session, and while the switch loads were swapped out between sessions, we all compared notes of how we approached different puzzles, while some of us took similar approaches, others succeeded using completely different methods and strategies. If a demo this closed off spawns this much discussion and room for experimentation, what's going to happen when millions upon millions of players are let loose into the open world of Hyrule? Those water cooler moments may very well come to define Tears of the Kingdom. You can do this using gyro controls, but I opted to use the D-pad the same way you would when positioning a Zonai device to attach to a vehicle. Using a combination of Ultra Hand movements and the recall ability, I get the platform to rotate in such a way that brings me to the final island, which gives me a key item needed to unlock a new area. I can't go into any more detail right now, but suffice it to say, there's a lot about Tears of the Kingdom that we still don't know. Leaving my hands on demo, I'm equal parts excited and intimidated by what The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom brings to the table. 
On one hand, I cannot wait to see just how clever and nearly game-breaking we can get using these various mechanics. It's truly amazing to see Nintendo react to the community's creativity in Breath of the Wild with a sequel that leans into how players use the mechanics in ways they probably never even thought of. In giving players even more tools and just as many new problems to solve, Nintendo is showing it's not afraid of letting players loose in a massive open world with perhaps the most open-ended mechanics it has ever implemented. Still, there's a part of me that has a familiar sense of worry that my brain won't keep up. It's a similar feeling to what I had when I first fired up Portal 2, another one of my favorite games of all time. Tears of the Kingdom brings a similar sense of brain-breaking innovation, even in the early hours I experienced. I can't tell you how many times I looked at something with bewilderment, only to think of a new way to use Recall, Ascend, Fuse, or Ultra Hand to create new interactions. There may somehow be even more Eureka moments in Tears of the Kingdom than there were in Breath of the Wild, and that's remarkable to even think about. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom feels like a true evolution of one of the most beloved games of the century. And this demo didn't even touch on the story and featured only minimal combat. In this game, the vast world of Hyrule reaches high into the sky. You'll notice some land masses floating up there. We call them Sky Islands. You're probably wondering something. How do you get to the Sky Islands when they're so high up? If we take a look, oh, something's falling from the sky. Do you see it? I wonder what that is. Let's head over to it. We're almost at the spot where the object fell. Here it is. Okay, let's use one of Link's new abilities. If you do this on the rock that just fell... Look, it started rising. This power is known as Recall, which rewinds an object's movement. Since I just used Recall on the fallen rock, I can now rise into the sky. We're a lot closer to the Sky Islands. Let's use the paraglider to reach one of them. There are a few other Sky Islands floating here too. I made it! There are lots of ways to reach the Sky Islands, so we hope you'll try a few different methods. Okay, now we're on a slightly bigger Sky Island. Just like on the surface, there are several man-made structures. Some trees are also growing here. You won't see many of those yellow trees on the surface, though. Let's walk around for a bit. There's a branch on the ground. When you find something like this, you should pick it up. It might come in handy later. Let's continue. Oh, something's there. This is a brand new enemy called a construct. We'll fight it using the branch we just picked up. Ah, the branch broke. Not good, not good. Quick, get another branch and... We defeated it. Moving on. We've now explored more of this Sky Island. As expected, fighting with just a branch won't get us very far. Also, this branch is almost broken. So here's another one of Link's new abilities. If we use this branch and the rock over here, and do this... Look! We can stick them together. We created a makeshift hammer. This is called Fuse. You can stick objects together to create new weapons with various effects. Let's take on another construct with this fused weapon. We're dealing with two of them at once. Oh, we beat one! The weapon's attack has definitely improved. The other branch broke, but this weapon has much better durability. You can do all sorts of things by experimenting with the fuse ability. You can fuse two weapons, for example. If we take this long stick and fuse it with a pitchfork, we can create a weapon with a much longer attack range. 
With this, we don't have to get too close to enemies, and we can safely attack from a distance. You can also fuse arrows with materials in your inventory. For instance, try fusing this leaf to an arrow. Fuse an ice elemental material to an arrow and... You can freeze faraway enemies. Very useful. In addition... Hmm, let's see. Ah, there's a bird flying around. If you're out hunting, you might feel that aiming with an arrow is too difficult. Apparently, my eyes can't track fast-moving objects as of late, so my shots rarely land. So, at times like these, here's an eyeball you can get by defeating monsters. Fuse it to an arrow and... Look, it homed in on the target. Let's try this on another bird. I'll just fire in that general direction. It's very simple. Depending on what you stick together, the fuse ability could also be beneficial for hunting. I fused a mushroom to my shield. Now, you're probably wondering if this has any use. Well, this mushroom is actually a puff shroom. Let's fight an enemy with this. I blocked with the shield. Okay, there's smoke now. The enemies lost sight of Link, so... Attack! Even if you struggle with combat, you can take down enemies using similar methods. In the previous game, you'd usually get powerful weapons by defeating strong enemies. But in this game, fusing even the weakest weapon with something else could turn it into a useful weapon. There are even more gameplay options for sticking things together. Let me demonstrate. Some of the Sky Islands even have rivers. We'll want to cross this one, but swimming across it, well, the river's too wide for that. We need a boat. Of course, there isn't anything that resembles a boat around here. So, we'll lift up this log and attach it to a second log. Let's do one more. We'll bring this over here and attach a third log. It's a makeshift raft. This is another new ability called Ultra Hand. Even though the logs are currently attached, they can be detached. Let's modify the shape of the raft. You can always attach things or detach them like this. Now, if we put this on the water, it's made of wood, so the buoyancy will keep it afloat. We've made a simplified version of a boat. However, it won't move in its current state, so we'll need something to propel it forward. Hmm, there's something here. Let's try hitting it. Oh, wind. It's blowing wind. Looks like we found a fan. Why don't we try attaching it? We'll attach another one. This should make the boat well balanced. Okay, they're attached. All right, let's try moving the boat. Hey, it's moving. It's sailing pretty fast with the wind from the fans. Since we added two fans, we should be able to cross the river in no time. All right, we reached the other side. In the most recent trailer, we showed scenes of Link riding a large car and a flying machine. Those vehicles actually aren't in the game from the start. Instead, you'll be able to freely craft them on your own. There are all sorts of objects you'll come across in this game. And depending on how you use your imagination, you can do a lot with them. So, try crafting different things and explore this world at your leisure. There are even more new abilities. Take this building over here. Okay, watch this. Look, 
I passed right through the ceiling. This new ability is called Ascend. If you're in a place with a ceiling, you can go through to the floor above you. There are some restrictions, but what's great about this ability is that as long as there's a ceiling, you can use it anywhere. For example, this place has a cave with a hill right above it. If we use the ability here, Come on, keep going. Okay, we emerged at the top of the hill. In the previous game, you had to use stamina to climb a mountain. But in this game, if there's a mountain with a cave like this one, you can now get to the top without having to climb all the way up. Here's another example. Imagine you're stuck in a cage. If it's got a ceiling, you know what to do, right? Exactly. Oh, there's another construct. It seems to be holding a strange weapon. Some enemies are equipped with fused weapons, so battles will play out a bit differently from the previous game. Ah, it blew me away with wind. Looks like it's got some sort of fan. Ah, I got pushed off. Ah, oh, well, let's just return to the surface. You can quickly descend from the sky to the surface like this. It feels so good. In the sky, you'll be able to look out across the land.